Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can put video inside of text inside of DaVinci Resolve. So the first thing that you should do is to take the clip that you want to be the video information for the text and drag that onto the timeline. After you've done that, select the clip in the timeline by left clicking on it and go over to the Fusion page. So that's going to be the one in the middle of the bottom. If you hover over it, it says Fusion. So in order to create this effect, we're going to need a series of nodes to modify the clip before it goes to its final output over here. So the first one I like to add in is going to be a transform node so that we can adjust the position of the base clip if we want different parts of the video clip to be showing for the text. So I'm going to right click here and go to add tool and then down to transform and then transform. So this allows us to change properties such as the position and the rotation and size of the video clip. So later when we actually have our text, we'll be able to adjust the position with this transform node. But for right now, we'll leave that set to its default values. Next, we're going to need to right click and go down to add tool and then mat and mat control. So in a minute here, this mat control node is basically going to serve as a mask for the import video clip. And in order for that to work, we're going to need to have a text node feed into the mat control. So I'm going to go ahead and click on text plus, which is the third from the left on the toolbar over here above the nodes section. And that will give us our text information. Um, in order to see what we're dealing with before we have our final result over here, I'm going to left click on the preview circle. Whenever you hover over a node, you'll be able to see it on the bottom left hand section. So click on the left circle to make that the left preview window over here. And then we can type in the text that we want to display. So for instance, I could type in the word ocean, change the font to something of your choosing. I like to use this big noodle titling font for title screens a lot. And then we can increase the size, of course. So we're going to want it to be much bigger than that on the frame. So I'm going to take the size and just ramp that up all the way. So at 0 0.5, that's the max we can set here. But you can actually make it appear even bigger than that. There's many ways you can do that. One way would be to go over to the layout tab in the inspector. And when you're there, you can reduce the center Z value to make the text appear closer to the camera. So you can see with a negative 0.2 center Z, it is really, really huge on the video frame now. So when you're talking about colors with respect to masks, white usually means an alpha of 1.0 and black would be 0.0. Uh, I would recommend going ahead and using just plain white as the base color, which is the default color anyway. So there's really no reason to play around with the color there anyway, because it's going to be replaced with the video clip. So just leave it plain white. And we need to take the output pin for this text node and connect it down to the solid matte pen. So you can hover over a pen to see which one you're talking about. It's one of the gray ones. So I'm going to connect it down there and you'll still see pretty much nothing on the final media out. We need to add a series of settings to the map control in order for it to actually work. So clicking on the map control up in the inspector, we're going to need to take the combine and change that to combine alpha, the combine operation and change that to subtract. And there's a checkbox down here at the bottom of the mat section for invert mat. Check that. And in order to take this and make it so that only the areas where it has text will show any information at this particular node, go ahead and check post multiply image as well. And then the result of this node will be that it will only show video information in the areas where it actually has text, which is probably what you want. Um, one other node you can add in addition to this, if you want to be able to play around with the brightness or the contrast, is going to be a brightness contrast node. So with matte control selected, I can right click on the line in front of it and go to add tool, color, and then brightness contrast. So with this node, if you want to make it look a little different here, you can do something like increase the gain or increase the contrast or decrease it depending on how you want it to appear and the final result. And at this point, you would have your basic result. So if we go back over to the edit page, uh, what you should see, assuming there's only one video in the timeline, is that you'll have a black background. Um, wherever this transparency, it gets replaced with black by default. Uh, but you'll be able to see your moving text there. And you can hit play in order to have it play back. So hopefully you have some cool moving images in the background and that should look pretty good. If it's a little slow while it's rendering, uh, don't worry about that. That's just how fusion effects look until they get fully rendered. And you can see that with the blue and red bar at the top of the timeline there. 
Now, if you just want to replace the background here with any video clip or an image, you're welcome to do that. All you would need to do is to move video track one to two and then drag your secondary video clip as the background to video track one. So that could be a JPEG image like this or it could be any video clip. Uh, really up to you what you want the background to be. Now there's another way we could handle this by bringing back some of the video information uh, to this background here. And there's a couple more things I want to show you on the Fusion tab as well. So let's continue by going back over to the Fusion tab. Okay, so first off, if your text is a little off center and you want to adjust the position, you can click on the text node and there'll be gizmos in the preview windows, but you can also adjust the center values uh, for X and Y in the layout tab. So get it to the position you actually want it to be in. And then if you want to adjust the position of the background clip, that's what the transform tab we created earlier was about. So you could, for instance, take the Y position and move that upwards. And you can see that that makes the video that shows in the text a different part of the original clip. Um, now, if you plan to actually have the original background show through, uh, you can see here that the video clip no longer fits the frame. So one way you can handle that is to increase the size so that the video clip uh, still covers the full final output frame. So you can take the size and increase that a little bit if you happen to be getting those edges where there's no video information. So if we want to take this video clip and have part of it show through uh, in the alpha areas, basically wherever there's a checkered background, um, then we're going to need to create a new brightness contrast node and split that off of the transform and then recombine them with a merge. So I'm going to right click here, go to add tool and do a color brightness contrast node. I'm going to connect the transform to the brightness contrast. And then I'm going to right click and create a merge node. So that is under composite. Okay, now this part is going to be important. Um, there is a orange connector for background and there is a green pen for the foreground. So we want the text to show on top of any background clip. So that means that the top brightness contrast, which has the text portion of this effect, needs to be the green connector, the foreground, so that it shows in front of the background. So first connect the bottom brightness contrast node, which we could rename uh, background adjustment or something like that just to make it more clear. And I'm going to take the output and connect that to the orange uh, background pen. And then we're going to take the brightness contrast on top, and we could call this text adjustment, and connect that into the green merge pen. We'll also left click on the line connector between the text adjustment and the media out, because we're going to want the merge node to actually combine and then that be the final media out. So take merge one and connect that to media out. And at this point, you should see the background come back in. Uh, you'll be able to see the text a little bit there if you have any adjusted values in the text adjustment. So basically the background clip is fully visible here, but the part that had text has additional gain and that's why it's a little brighter in those areas. So now we just take the text adjustment and background adjustment, the brightness contrast nodes, and play around with the settings until we get them where they need to be. And because we brought the background in, uh, there should be no transparency in the final output anymore. So this whole effect will cover anything that is below it in the timeline. So I'm going to take the background adjustment and uh, let's just play around with the settings a little bit. So maybe we lower the gain to darken it. If we wanted to make it black and white or something like that, you can take the saturation and drop that to zero. That seems a little extreme. So uh, let's, so I'll just go ahead and undo that. Uh, maybe we want the brightness to be down because I, I really want this text to show through. So I think that the text should be brighter. And we can take the text adjustment and increase the brightness here. But something I've realized just now is that um, because the text adjustment is actually coming after the mat control, it's applying to the full video clip. So I think what we want is for this to actually be moved behind the mat control. So I'm going to select this, hit control X and then hit control V to paste it back in. And let's make this the in-between connector between mat control and the transform. So text adjustment goes into mat control. And when we do this uh, and adjust the brightness, so now it's only affecting the areas which are getting masked out with the matte control. So that's actually what we want. So just go ahead and preview it by selecting the starting frame and hitting play in the fusion timeline. Of course, if everything hasn't pre-rendered, it's gonna play back a little slow, but you should be able to get an idea of how the final rendering is going to look. So that's pretty much it for how you can put video inside of text inside of DaVinci Resolve. 
I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.